This is a review of my experience with the Insta360 1RS 4K Boost and the DJI Osmo Action 3 compared to my GoPro 11. It will be a review of image quality more than detailed features and menus, which I'm sure you've found multiple times in other places. The Insta360 1RS has a lot of great features on paper. I wonder how they stand up to testing. It has an active HDR video setting and will record video log files with a LUT available for color grading in DaVinci Resolve and other programs. It takes HDR photos and saves them in three images that I can assemble in Photomatix or another program. It has a compact external microphone and power adapter that is inexpensive. I'm hoping the active HDR video will work better in difficult lighting conditions like bright sky and dark shadows where other cameras often struggle. So I finally broke down and bought one and here are some of my image samples compared to my GoPro 11. It was difficult lighting with the sun shining on the trees and everything else in shade, but I get that a lot when I'm riding early in the morning, so this isn't an unreasonable test. The GoPro is managing to balance the brights and darks pretty well, though I usually adjust the saturation some later. So of course I had to try HDR video on the 1RS right away, but I was quite shocked at the results. The GoPro video looked like what I'm seeing, but this does not. So let's try the regular video setting. I had the color set on vivid because I think the GoPros are set to vivid, but there's still not much color in the sky. The trees are still blown out and there's not much detail in the darks. Here's an iPhone 12 Pro video for comparison. I usually boost the saturation, but the color balance is nice and there's a lot of detail in the foreground tree. Here's that same video with a small amount of saturation adjustment. So let's record this in a video log format, which is like a digital RAW file. The camera doesn't do adjustments, but a LUT is provided to adjust the color in your editing software. Here are some videos with audio, first the top half, then the bottom half. The cameras are side by side, rotating on a Lazy Susan. I'm paying close attention to the sharpness of the grass and the leaves and other details, and the fragile colors of the sky. And I have to say, I'm disappointed everywhere I look in the 1RS. The sky doesn't have good contrast, color, and detail, even when I boost the saturation. The leaves look mushy and blurred, unlike the ones in the GoPro. You can see we're losing delicate features in the sky and who knows where else. And they're too faint to bring back with adjustments later. You'll notice both are getting a bit of lens flare. Field of view between the two is pretty similar. I think they both claim around 16 millimeter at, at wide image setting. The GoPro continues to get better sky color and detail, as well as better detail in the leaves with less mushiness. Even up close here you can see the pile of wood is much sharper in the GoPro. So I did keep looking at cameras and looked more at the Action 3. I had considered it before but never found a way to use an external microphone and power the camera at the same time. I did bump into a video of somebody who had found this setup 
which was only $29. The receiver there in the middle above the camera plugs into the camera and a power cable plugs into that. The microphones are rechargeable. They came with foam covers. I added the dead cats. They say the battery life is six to eight hours. Some people have said less in reviews. I usually use these on a bike and wire gets in my way sometime. So the issues associated with wireless are probably worth it. The Action 3 has some nice features. The touch screen on the front, which I probably won't use, but might come in handy occasionally. I have the door off the side to plug in the external microphone. I appreciate the larger screen on back compared to the One RS. This is about the same size as the GoPro. The battery comes out the side with the door folding down instead of up as with the GoPro. Firmware updates have added 10-bit video, HDR video, and an enhanced video setting, which I kind of like. So far my tests have been very positive. I like the way it handles. It turns on very fast. Copy speed from the camera to the computer with a USB-C is a bit faster than the GoPro, though they're both recording in 10-bit HEVC. The Action 3 videos were larger than the GoPro's. My tests included five videos. The GoPro's total was 800 megabytes. The Action 3 was 1370 megabytes for a simultaneous capture of the same images. That could be the case with more detail that isn't able to be compressed as well. I haven't spent enough time with them to evaluate that. I thought the regular video mode with 10-bit and enhanced image quality turned on was very good. I will probably use HDR because a lot of times I have bright skies and darker treed areas to contend with and the GoPro struggles with those. So let's take a look at a few samples. There's some wind out here. There's some wind out here. some wind out here. There is some wind out here. set to regular video, the 10 bit and enhanced. GoPro was set to 10 bit. Osmo set to regular video. Osmo 
set to regular video. The 10 bit and enhanced. GoPro is set to 10 bit. Osmo set to regular video. Here's just one still from each camera to evaluate sharpness, color, shape, and quality. The GoPro is a lot higher resolution, but I like the 16.9 feature on the Action 3. But of course the GoPro JPEG can be cropped to 16 by 9 and still be higher resolution. Though I thought the quality of the Action 3 still was quite nice. Not that I usually use them for still photos. I did do a test on my bike comparing Hypersmooth to Rocksteady and found them to be completely equivalent. So I'm not including much of that here. If I thought GoPros were perfect I wouldn't be looking at other cameras but I'm always on the lookout for something better and GoPros have screwed up a few times once recently But this one put a dent in my confidence. This didn't happen the next time I tested the camera, so GoPro couldn't do much about it and didn't reply as if they'd seen this before. So that leaves me just waiting for it to happen again, which would spoil more footage that I worked pretty hard to get. My only clue was that that was a warm and bumpy day. They suggested turning off 10-bit which I tried for a while. I also changed from Hypersmooth Boost just to Hypersmooth. And that's about when I started looking at other cameras again. On my last ride I turned 10-bit back on but left Hypersmooth just on and not on Boost. I run three cameras at a time, one with external microphones and all with external power, so I have a lot of things that can go wrong. But as much as I wanted to like it, the Insta360 ONE RS is going to go back. The image quality and color rendition just doesn't compare in the tests I've done. Maybe I had a bad camera because a lot of other people seem to like them. Maybe it's the content I capture, but I've tried all the settings and everything I can think of and haven't been able to do any better. The DJI Osmo Action 3, on the other hand, impressed me right out of the box. Not only in HDR video mode, but in standard mode as well, with the enhanced image quality turned on. It turns on quickly and has the large rear screen to control it, like the GoPro. The menus work similarly to the GoPro, but it still took me a little while to figure out where everything was. I had to run all these tests just to figure this out for myself, so I thought I'd pass them along in a video. I hope they're helpful for someone.